I want to bring in Advancement Project Executive Director Judith Brown Dianis and President and Senior Lecturer of Repairs of the Breach, the Reverend Dr. William Barber. Uh, thank you both for being here. Uh, I'm going to go to you first, uh, Reverend Barber, to get your reaction um, to Donald Trump uh, attacking uh, the great John Lewis via Twitter this morning. Well, first of all, I agree with John, uh, John Lewis. I think that he's standing in the tradition of Isaiah 58 that says, cry loud and spare not. Uh, the tradition of Dr. King, when Dr. King sometimes says sometimes a moral person has to take a position that's neither political, uh, nor safe, uh, nor popular, but it's the right thing to do. Notice what he said. He said illegitimate. Uh, the word there literally means out of step with the accepted norms and laws. Th th when you think about the hacking uh, with Russia, that is proven. The, the letters and the involvement of the FBI. When you think about, we just came through an election where the courts have said we have had intentional voter suppression. More than 868 less voting sites in the black community. Thousands of people's votes have been suppressed. The lies that Trump told that were never really pushed back on in, in, by some of the media. There is a great deal of uh, illegitimacy as to this uh, man's candidate. And I can tell you lastly, Joy, over 10,000 clergy and activists, we wrote him and asked to meet with him to discuss things with them, and they still have not responded. So I stand with John as he stand, John Lewis as he stands in the tradition of the prophets, the tradition of Jesus, and the tradition of, of Martin Luther King to, to say what is right even when people may not want to hear it. Yeah, and yet he found time to meet with Steve Harvey and to, I guess, put him and uh, Dr. Ben Carson in charge of urban housing, which is interesting. Uh, I want to play a little bit of John Lewis's testimony um, for you, Judith. Um, this is the testimony that was put to the back of the bus, as Cedric mm -hmm. Richmond um, uh, this is John Lewis. It doesn't matter how Senator Session may smile, how friendly he may be, how he may speak to you, but we need someone who's going to stand up, speak up, and speak out for the people that need help, for people being discriminated against. And, and speaking of standing up and speaking out, Judith, now let's listen to Jeff Sessions. And he's talking about one of the specific issues that he would oversee um, if he heads the Department of Justice as Attorney General, and that is the issue of consent decrees, usually relating uh, to police misconduct. Take a listen. It's a difficult thing for a city to be sued by the Department of Justice and to be told that your police department is uh, systematically uh, failing to serve the people of the state or the city. They often feel forced to agree to a consent decree uh, just to uh, remove that stigma. Do you trust Jefferson Sessions to stand up and speak out for the people uh, in need of help or who've been discriminated against when it comes to enforcing consent decrees? Not at all. I mean, for someone who is up for attorney general to already take the position that is a pro-police position, and in the face of the reports that the Department of Justice put out in Ferguson, and most recently in Chicago, that shows systemic problems with policing. Everything from unreasonable use of force to kill that was unjustified to using slurs, discriminatory slurs, and for him to stand and say that I'm going to be the chief enforcer of our civil rights laws, but I stand with police is problematic and he should not be. Confined. And we just had this report on extensive problems in the Chicago Police Department. Do you trust Jeff Sessions to deal with those issues uh, in the Chicago PD? No, I mean, it, the report is damaged for Chicago Police Department and unfortunately Sessions is going to be in a position where he can actually undermine that consent decree and undo all of the progress that this DOJ has been and, doing. And, and Reverend Barber, um, what about all the issue of voting rights? Um, what are your concerns regarding putting Jefferson Sessions in charge of the voting rights of American citizens? You know, Joe, what was interesting is the people, particularly the African Americans that supported him the other day in the testimony, they talked about, well, he visited me, um, you know, when I had a baby. Well, you know, slave masters visited the shacks too. <laughs> Jesse Hams hired black people. Strom Thurmond loved black women, had a black. That doesn't mean you're not racist. When, but when you look at his policy, this man has a contempt for the 15th Amendment. Uh, he tried to lock up people who were fighting for voting rights. He applauded the Shelby decision. He 
hasn't said anything about the proven voter suppression, intentional race-driven voter suppression. Uh, he didn't even know, he said, about the North Carolina case, which is the largest case in the country since Shelby. Uh, I have no doubt that he has a contempt for the 15th Amendment. Now, as a senator, he would not be one who would protect voting rights uh, if we give him the authority to be the chief in law enforcement officer in this country. And we're not talking about his past history. This is his recent history. In his recent history, he has shown no repentance for what he has done and no reorientation uh, to support uh, the voting rights laws of this country. And it is a scary thing to think that he would be the top law enforcement officer. And you know, uh, you just had uh, the Trump administration announce that they are relieving um, the uh, African American head of the D.C. National Guard from his position effective immediately on January 20th, so you won't be able to oversee that parade. Do you have concerns about Jeff Sessions as the person who would be in the John, in the Robert Kennedy position That's right. if there were protests and there was brutality mm. against uh, demonstrators? Oh, definitely. I mean, this is one of, one of the things that justice does is that when there is a problem and people can't, can't actually trust their local Departments. The Justice Department steps in, steps in to protect the community, steps in to protect protesters. This Department of Justice Sessions is not going to be on the side of people who are actually trying to protect communities, the people who are standing up against an unaccountable police departments. And so this is a real crisis to think that we're going to go backwards. There is no Robert Kennedy. There is no uh, Eric Holder. There is no John Doerr in this Department of Justice. And unfortunately, it leaves our communities more vulnerable. And, it, and uh, as somebody who uh, routinely gets arrested in these protested, uh, protests yeah. standing up against um, what you see as injustice at the state level, are you worried um, that there will be no cavalry coming uh, from the federal government uh, as Jeff Sessions takes over the DOJ, Reverend Barber? Well, deeply concerned. Uh, this, is, as, as my good friend um, just said, it takes us backwards. Uh, but I will say that it's not going to deter us uh, from protesting and from engaging in civil disobedience. But Jeff Sessions, again, as a senator, has shown contempt for the First Amendment and the way in which he uh, wants to, to, to attract Muslims. He has shown contempt for the 14th Amendment. He does not believe in equal protection under the law. Uh, this is a very troublesome, but as Nell Painter said about Donald Trump, who was not qualified to be president, but he was qualified to answer the call of white, white lash. Jeff Sessions is qualified to answer the call of that same kind of reclamation and white lash, be after um, Holder and after um, uh, Loretta Lynch. But we have a fight on our hands, and we have to engage that fight, uh, and we will have to begin it day one. Yeah, indeed. Well, we will uh, continue to uh, watch what both of you are doing, Judith Brown, Dianas, and the Reverend Dr. William Barber. Thank you both, uh, and a, a, a peaceful MLK weekend to both of you. All right, and coming up, thank you, and coming up in our next hour, new congressional action on Russia's role in the election, and Republicans begin the Obamacare repeal. But where's their replacement? But first, more AM Joy after the break.